Can Boston recover from their shameful, shameful 2023 playoff round exit? Welcome back, motherfuckers. Things look a little different this week. Um, Danger is dealing with the life life and so it's just Chris and I this week. So unfortunately, um, the prettiest team member is out and you're stuck with us. Now you're stuck with uh, the librarian and the bald guy. Yeah, right. Although this is not a librarian shirt. No, you're once. not. You're not I'm rocking wearing, the, like the sexy gear. librarian thing today. No, I mean, the glasses are always, but not rocking the sexy librarian. That's all right. I'm just next week. I'll make up for it. I'm just always bald. Yeah. Next week. Next week. We definitely want to see the sexy librarian vibes. Full librarian. Kick it. Just go I'll for do, it. I'll do like a collared shirt and a car and a cardigan. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, God. Just full librarian. Oh, here we go. Yeah, it'll be great. Going to make I'll someone's, make someone's someone day. Oh, I'll remind you. Don't you worry. <laughs> this is this is on the Internet forever. So you are. <laughs> You are committed to doing this. I'm holding I'm you to this shit. To okay, perfect. <laughs> Great. I love when that happens. Yeah. Um, for those of you who don't know, the bald one is Chris. The librarian is me. I'm D. <laughs> nice to meet you. We are. Um, welcome to the Pucked Up <laughs> Podcast. Woo! We are. We are absolutely pucked up. Yeah, we um, are. If there's one thing that the three of us are, is uh, it's mentally unstable. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god yeah no that's true yeah what it's true I... and it's accurate what was it like i saw something it was like my mental health is like terrible but my ass is glorious or something like that yeah yeah i was like wow i live true. that so i mean that is you to a t it, literally yeah <laughs> someone's just been of... following you around taking notes i mean like look his mental health in the garage it's real bad but that ass, ass though, though. <laughs> Yum. Mwah, That's literally what they said. Chef's kiss. Yeah. Chef's, chef's kiss. kiss. Whatever you're chef's doing, kiss. keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> On both ends. Yeah. On both <laughs> For ends. Real. <laughs> keep ignoring your mental health, but doing leg day. But yeah, day, exactly. You know? Make sure you're doing some squats. There you go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Work those glutes. <laughs> um, anyway. <laughs> We can't ever be professional. Or no. I don't know why anyone and, thinks And you're the are. CEO. Well, this is what happens when you leave first in command True. and second in command by themselves. <laughs> I know, right? No one should ever do that. Jesus Christ. Ever at all. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my God. Well, what do you say we jump into some news? Hell yeah. Around the NHL. Actually... I take that back. Let's jump into news around the PWHL. Yes. Because women are better and they deserve to go first. All right. I'm um, starting off actually with some <laughs> trade news because as we talked about the uh, last week, the PWHL trade line has come up. Um, so we saw uh, the first trade, I believe, which was um, they both kind of happened around the same time. So, yeah. Anyway, um, they announced that there was a trade. Boston received Lexi Edgida and rights to Katrin Lonergan. Um, and then Ottawa received Cheyenne Dark Angelo. Great name. That is a Can great I just name. Say? That is a great Dark name. Dark Angelo. Yes. That's amazing. <laughs> 10 out of 10. Um, so that is pretty cool. We also saw a trade between Montreal and Ottawa. So Ottawa was like, let's fucking shake some shit up. We're going to try some, some shit. Right. So Montreal got Amanda Boulier and Ottawa received Teresa Venesova. So those are the big trades that happened in the PWHL this last week. Um, both of those trades happened just yesterday on March 18th. Um, we also heard the announcement um, that we get every week, which I always look forward to every single week, which is the three stars of the PWHL. Yes. So starting with our third star, Callie Flanagan, a defensive woman from Toronto. Uh, in her last game, which was a 2-1 to one win against Montreal and Pittsburgh, she provided the key offensive spark for her team with a goal and an assist. She assisted on Hannah Miller's first period goal, which opened up the game's scoring. In the second period of the game, tied 1-1, to one, Flanagan tallied from just above the goal line her third goal this season. 
Thanks in no part to Flanagan's offensive contribution, Toronto extended their winning <coughs> excuse me, puberty, <laughs> their winning streak to 10 games and now sits first in the PWHL standings. It's the first multi-point game this season for the 29-year-old, who is also plus two as she doubled her season for total, four-point total. There you go. Yeah. There we go. We got there. <laughs> um, second star, Michaela Kava, left winger out of Minnesota. Kava is named to the PWHL three stars for the first time this season after a breakout week. After entering the week with one goal through her team's first 16 games, Kava had three goals and two games played. In her first game against Boston, she provided the insurance marker on a 4 0 win. On the 16th, she had a pair of goals, the first time she's recorded multiple points this season. Kava scored the game's first goal and then added her second at the beginning of the third period, a crucial tally after New York scored late in the second period, making the game 3 1. The 29 year old more than doubled her season point total last week to four goals and one assist and moved up to a tie for third on Minnesota in goals scored. And a name that we're all familiar, got first star yet again, Kendall Coyne Schofield, a right winger out of Minnesota. Coyne Schofield collected two goals and two assists in two games played last week. The output raised her season total to six goals and seven assists and propelled her into the top five in league scoring with 13 points. Tied with Ottawa's Katarina Mrazova and New York's Ella Shelton. And the second in team scoring behind Grace Zumwinkle. Coyne Schofield had a goal and an assist in each contest. She scored the game-winning goal against Boston on March 13th, um, adding the assist on the insurance marker. On March 16th, she helped her team break away in the third period against New York, putting up an assist and a goal in just 16 seconds and a route to a 5-1 statement win at home. Minnesota's captain was plus six in last week's games with nine shots on goal as her team secured two regulation wins. They now sit tied in points with the PWH in the PWHL. With Toronto at 33 apiece, most in the league. That's nuts. Yeah. So well, the PWHL continue to do cool, cool stuff. Oh, yeah. And I mean, anyone who's ever watched international women's hockey at all mm -hmm. has watched Kendall whip everyone's ass. She's hands down oh, yeah. one of the best Americans to play the game. Uh, She's incredible. I'm curious to see what these moves for Ottawa are going to do because they're fifth in the league they've they've you know they're 21 yeah. points right now they have um I, you know at that point when you're at the bottom you might as well shake it up you know there's there's i think so i know their next game was is in i think it's against montreal uh no it's um... against minnesota on uh april 20th it looks like is there no, I am reading that wrong. I'm the sorry. 20th is Ottawa versus uh, New York. March 20th. Yeah, Ottawa versus New York. Yeah. Um so I'm curious to see yeah. how that's going to look. Um Yeah. I mean, fuck it. I'm amazed New York didn't do anything. I mean, I think that there's still time, <laughs> right, for additional trades. When yeah, I was going to say when was the deadline specifically? Let that already see. passed, right? I don't think so. Um if so, that was a really really short showing for the year. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, okay. It has been, it was, uh, revised. So it is actually tonight. Okay. So, so it passed um, at 4 PM. Yesterday, it looks like, unless they did revise it today. That's, updated. oh, that's right. No, the new, so the new roster freeze, um, is happened today at okay. noon. All right. So all yeah. trades were done in by yesterday, in by Monday, um, and then roster freeze today. Oh, so if you guys aren't following, so interesting the... that we only saw two trades. Yeah, I mean, if you guys aren't following the PWHL on on social media, you should be. I know on Instagram yeah. that they post at the beginning of each week their week schedule of games, mm -hmm. um, which is helpful. But yeah, if you guys aren't following them on fucking socials, you need to be. They also have a newsletter, too, if anyone is interested in that. Yes. Um, which is nice. Um, but just so you know, following the roster freeze, the PWHL team rosters will include 23 active players who have been signed to the standard player agreement, plus a maximum of three reserve player contracts. Players listed on the team's long-term injured reserve do not count towards either total. Okay. So this is as they're getting ready, um, much like the Men's Hockey League, uh, to go into playoff season, and there's not really a lot of changing around that can happen during that time. Yeah. Understandably so. Right, right. Everything's yeah. just free agency movements now. 
Right, pretty much. Which um, I don't know if we'll see much of that in the PWHL just yet. Again, this is their first year. Yeah, so I'm not sure what the, um, what that's going to look like. Yeah, but we are definitely going to see some of that in the NHL coming up. Um, we are going to talk a little bit about that. So actually, um, Chris, you want to jump into the men's free agency notable standouts that we yeah. should be paying attention to? So um, I know that there's a lot of players that, that everyone was expecting at the beginning of the season that have since inked uh, inked stuff. I believe uh, I believe Austin Matthews, William Nylander, Sebastian Ajo. I'm pretty sure even Tom Wilson is inked. Um, yes, he is. These, these are all players that we were expected to extend, but there's mm-hmm. there's like <clears throat> twelve guys right now that I'm shocked aren't um, aren't going or are currently not signed. Um, obviously, right. Things are things are always destined to change. You never know. Um, but I know the salary cap does increase by four point two million. Uh, starting next season, nice. which is the biggest jump since COVID. Uh, yeah, so, and it's necessary, honestly. Yeah, so I'm going to run through these. Uh, this is courtesy of sportsnet.ca. Um, so shout out, to, shout out to Sportsnet for always being on it. This is an article that they had. So I'm going to start from 12, go all the way down to one. Um, number one or number 12 is Dylan DeMello, uh, defenseman. 31 years old as a, uh, it'll as he will be on July 1st. Uh 2023 2024 cap hit a 3 million. Um I mean Dylan DeMello is a really solid player. Uh <clears throat> he's he's been I mean there's not much help right now for yeah. You know, but <laughs> cuz DeMello is um he's over with Winnipeg and I mean I don't see mm-hmm like everything I don't know. Demello Demello's one of those players that I'm I I don't want to go out on a limb and say, oh, he's like immediately gonna be one of those guys that, that's gonna fit into any situation. But right. you never know. Um Tyler Tafoli I mean Oh sorry. I was just gonna say I think he uh I don't I think they will resign him um because they have a strong defense right now in Winnipeg and I don't think they want to fuck that up. So my guess would be that we are going to see something. Um, right and I think we'll see it at some point. I mean, he's got 23 points on 60 in 67 games. Like he's, he's not producing offensively, but he's got a plus minus of plus 35. So that's, that is yeah. huge. That's it's be- their defensive team is pretty. I think they are one of the, I think they might be one of the um, top in the league in defense. They're the top in the league. Yeah. So yeah, he might not be producing, but he's shutting shit down, and that is equally as important as we all know. Defense wins championships. Yes, so. absolutely. Winnipeg likely won't get to the championships this year, but you know, yeah, because you're gonna things could happen. You're gonna have to deal with Vegas. Um, yeah. <laughs> number eleven, Tyler Toffoli, thirty-two years old. He will be at the uh, the start of free agency. He's a winger for the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, Four point two five million cap hit this year. Uh, obviously got picked up by the Jets at the deadline from the, uh, New Jersey Devils, which I'm still scratching my fucking head on why they traded him. Uh, um, again, I think it's a <laughs> rental situation. I, you know, I think so. I, I'm, I'm curious to see where this goes because, uh, Tyler Toffoli is a guy that's going to help in offense in so many ways. I think, I think it's a... It's a good move depending on what you're willing to pay him. Yeah. Because he is he is in his early 30s which we see players tend to uh either pick up and get really hot or uh it's the start of the end baby. Yeah. So, I don't know, we'll see. Yeah. What do you think? I mean, again, I'm sticking with that this is a rental. Um, I don't know why New Jersey would trade him away other than the fact that they are um, currently in not a good place. I don't even remember where they are in the rankings um, overall, but they are like sixth in the Metropolitan or something like that. I mean, he's got... Um, so they're they're likely not going to see the Stanley Cup. 49 so points might as well on 65 games. 30 of those points are goals. Yeah. So like, I... 
Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but I think um, the GM for Winnipeg um, made some sort of comment about how they were going deep with rentals this year. So, because I also I, got uh, Sean Monahan and Cullen Miller too. Yeah, I mean, you might you might as well because like if you, you have, have a chance, a I can go for it. Shot this year. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're first in the Western uh, Western Central Division. Yeah. Which we'll definitely be talking about the standings soon, too. Yeah. Because um, obviously playoffs are getting close. Um, another uh, one that I feel like might have or might be heading, I don't know, hopefully staying. Uh, number 10 is Tuvo Teravainen, uh, left winger mm-hmm. and right winger for the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, at the deadline, or not at the deadline, I'm sorry, at the, um, at the free agent start July 1st, he'll be 29, carrying a 5.4 million cap hit this year. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, Tara Vine has got 47 points this season. Uh, he's played 66 games. He's very, very productive and he's very helpful. So if, if they can't afford yeah. to keep him in Carolina, he's going to slot in perfectly somewhere else. Well, so I think that, um, from what I'm saying that his contract has kind of stalled out mostly on the player's end. Yeah. Um, and I think that it's a lot of like, but what's going on in Carolina right now, it's a lot of wait and see. Rod Brindamore is also up for his contract to be extended, and that hasn't happened yet. And I think they're waiting to see what kind of a playoff run that they can get. Yeah. Um, and likely that'll determine, because I have a feeling that, I mean, Tara Vinen can go a lot of places. Yes. And he's, like you said, he'll only be 29. Um, and he, yeah, he can free play agency, any so I think that's what helps him. Exactly. He, he can go really pretty well. much anywhere. And I think he's going to want to take his options in free agency and see if he can get on a cup contender. Because that's what, I mean, that's what everybody wants, right? Everybody wants to hoist that shiny, shiny piece of metal. Well, and so. I mean, with what they've had over the past few years, it's it's not crazy to think that the Hurricanes don't have a shot. And yeah. another another player on the list, literally number nine, that they have ranked is Brett Pesci. Speaking of uh, Carolina yeah. Hurricanes players, Brett Pesci is a mm-hmm. defenseman. Um, he'll also be 29 on June or by June 20. Um, Jesus Christ. Right. I can't read. I'm sorry. It's July 1st, July 1st. <laughs> Thank you. Um, he's, he's carrying a cap hit of four, uh, 4.025 million this year. There's been rumors talked about that they were going to trade him. He's not having a good season. <laughs> like, for, yeah, for his, for his standards, it's been a pretty lackluster year. He's 58 gil- uh, fifty eight games this season. He's only got 12 points, a plus yeah. minus of plus six. Like, it's not... This is a player I could see... Stellar. No, but he is a good defenseman, and I think the I think that a f- new, like, new scenery is going to help him because he's played his entire career up yeah. to this point with Carolina. Right. So maybe new scenery is a good thing for him? Maybe. We'll see. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, again, I think we're going to, I think that if, if Carolina gets slotted out early of the playoff run, I think we're going to see a massive shakeup in that organization because this will be how many years in a row that that they've they've just got in and blown it when they had incredible teams, incredible I mean, they got swept last year the, by Florida. Swept. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so if that happens, if anything like that happens again, I think we're going to see massive, massive changes. Uh, I mean, yeah. And I mean, obviously, it's not like it's not like it's out of the woods now to think about last season, considering a how far mm-hmm. Florida made it and b how good Florida is this season. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I like at some point. You have to like keep your core because they have a great core. Obviously, Sebastian Ajo's locked mm-hmm. down. As long as Spech stays healthy, you're good. Freddie Anderson's not going anywhere. Um, yeah. So you keep your core locked down and build upon that. I think it's okay to get rid of some people. It's okay to let some people yeah. walk and and try something new. But again, maybe that's what he needs. Is maybe that's what Pesci needs is something new. His a change of scenery. Yeah. A new system, something. Speaking of a te- a player who's seen a lot of new teams in in the past <laughs> few years, number eight, Matt Duchesne, yeah. uh, center right winger for the Dallas Stars, uh, carrying a cap hit this season of three million. He will be uh thirty three by July first. 
Mm-hmm. It's it's fucking Matthew Shane, bro. He's got fifty eight points yeah. this season. Like he's only thirty three. He's been traded a few times, but fuck, is he so productive everywhere he goes? Yeah. Yeah, and I think part of the problem there is that they have a lot of other people that are also going to be looking to extend. Yeah. Um, and so what do you do? You only have so much money, even with the 4.2 raise, right, it's... Um, in cap. Yeah, you're going to you, have to pay some you guys. You start running out of that money really quick, and you have to pay some guys. Because what's so Jason Robertson's contract look like? Because he's he's their guy. Well, they have Ty De- uh, Delandria coming up, Sam Steele, and yep. Joe Pavelski also yeah. coming up. So, so, I mean, Joe Pavelski, I can't imagine that they're going to get rid of anytime soon because it's fucking Pavelski, Joe Pavelski. And he's like, you know what I mean? 40 now. Yeah. Um, so we'll see. Yeah. I know he, but I think that be... people will be knocking on that door. You know what oh I mean? To God, see yeah, if you... Duchenne's available. You would be and that stupid might be not to. If someone gives them the right price, I think that they'd be willing to part with them. Oh, honestly. yeah. Well, because... The thing, the thing is, is do you sign him and try to use him as leverage for the next season's trade deadline just in case mm-hmm. um, it doesn't go the way you want it to? Or do right. you just let him walk in the off season and just say, hey, you know, good, good luck. I good guess. luck out there. Yeah. yeah. Um, Which I think that he would. If if Dallas is like, you know what, I don't think it's going to work out this time, bud. I think there'll be a couple of clubs that'll yeah. be like, but you know where it could work. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, and I mean, again, we're we're seeing all these extension problems. The next player is another one that I think is going to have that same yeah. issue. Uh, number seven, <laughs> Jonathan Marcheseau. Yeah. He's a winger for the Vegas right? Golden Knights. Uh, he'll be 33 by July 1st, carrying a 5 million cap hit this year. They have... Yeah. Uh, they have Chandler Stevenson, uh, Anthony mm-hmm. Mantha, Noah Hannafin. <laughs> yeah, uh, these are all these are all guys that they need to re-sign as well that are on one-year deals. Um, mm-hmm. But Marshy's got fifty-eight points this season. <laughs> He's on yeah. fire. So yeah, I, I don't. This is, again, we had the same conversation last year with Vegas about their goaltending situation. Yeah, oh, God. Which is still kind of ongoing in many ways, it right? It really is. Like, because... We thought it was going to be over. We thought by the time the summer came and went, like... That, yeah, they were going to we have would two. see something. And we yeah. have no idea. Because Aiden... I mean, obviously, Aiden Hill earned his starting spot. Oh, fuck yeah. But they still have Robin Leonard, who hasn't played... I know. Um, In, like... He hasn't played at all this Almost season. Almost two years of this. He, yeah, he hasn't played at all this year. Yeah, and he didn't play much last year. If yeah. I remember right? No, he. Yeah. This dude. So, this, this next one, I don't see being anything different than what I would imagine. But number six on this list mm-hmm. is Steven Stamkos. Uh, for those that don't know who steven stamkos is yeah where the fuck have you been the last 15 years and (laughs) um he is a (laughs) forward for the tampa bay lightning uh Mm -hmm. he'll be 34 by july 1st carrying um carrying an 8.5 million cap hit this year uh there hasn't been any talks about an extension uh no which is crazy because uh, he's the all-time leader in goals, points, and power plays. Right. He's played his entire career with Tampa Bay. He has mm-hmm. 60 points this season. On 64 yeah, he's games, on this man is... For 80. He's averaging almost a point a game mm-hmm. at 34 years old. <laughs> yeah. Um, if Tampa doesn't sign I him... I think that's wild. I've lost all faith in them if they don't re-sign I think- if if they don't re-sign him, I think the fan base is going to lose their shit. Oh because God. this is someone that I think I associate so much with Tampa Bay, and I think their fan base would agree. Yeah, I feel like this is their Alex Ovechkin. This is someone who they who fans would feel like his number deserves to be retired in the rafters. Yeah, and he's done, and he deserves to retire a Lightning. Yeah, you know what I mean. 
It's the same. It reminds yeah, it's me. It's crazy to me. This reminds me of the situation that Tampa was in, obviously, uh, several years ago when yeah. they traded both Vinny LeCavalier, who was another mainstay Lightning player, and Marty right. St. Louis. Like, you're two Marty all St. Louis was such a. But they traded him to New one. York, and then he went off in New York, and they almost won a Stanley yeah. Cup. But. Well, like, I would, if they do that to Steven, if they do that, I would hope that wherever dirty. he goes, they fucking, fucking light it up. I, I hope they shit on him. Mm-hmm. Not only do I hope that they make it like all the way to cup final, but I hope that they face the lightning in the playoffs and sweep them. And just sweep them. You know them, what I mean? Yeah. Because I hope he embarrasses them. He's physically and emotionally yeah. if they do him dirty. Like, I, that's where I'm at. <laughs> The only the only downside and only blemish to his season so far is that his plus minus rating is a minus twenty two, like that's that's real not yeah. good this year. But that's not great. Other than that, his offensive output is fucking still as good as it's ever been. Like this guy is a former Hart Trophy winner. Yeah. Like right. he's. But also, I think there's a quantifiable thing about his leadership, right? Like he yeah. is a leader on and off the ice. And so do you want to get rid of that? Who who is going to replace him in yeah. that? Well, and that's that's the real question is how do you quantify the idea of changing your locker mm-hmm. room in such a massive way yeah. when you just came off? It's not that long ago they were in three straight Stanley Cup finals. Yeah. And they almost won three in a row. Like Thank if, God they didn't. If the they did fucking Tampa Bay would have been un insufferable. Oh my god. Because at that point they had just won a Super Bowl. Yeah. <sighs> it would have been It would have been terrible. Awful. So like thank God. But like But they also met the, yeah. the fucking Colorado Avalanche who were just insane. Yeah. I I think Absolutely. time will tell. I think that he stays. I don't think he goes anywhere personally. I hope so. I would yeah. imagine that uh but it's just, a little nerve wracking that it seems to be stalling out on management side and not on the player side. Yeah. They've committed That's more than $75 million me. towards the cap next year. Yeah. He will have, he'll have to take a pay cut. Yeah. Like that's Which, the reality of it. And uh, that, he's been there long enough. I mean, I would imagine that that's not off the table, but still like, I don't know. I just, I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. Um, a name that we did mention prior, number five would be Noah Hannafin, mm-hmm. defenseman for the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, he was acquired by Vegas from Calgary at the deadline. Uh, he'll be 27 yep. by July 1st, carrying a $4.95 million cap hit. Uh, Hannafin's mm. got 39 points this season, plus minus a plus 15. This is okay. Vegas's panic mode when they when um mark stone ended up on long-term ir obviously they went out got yeah. him they got anthony mantha uh tomas hurdle so they ended up uh, loading yeah. it up how did that happen I, fucking <laughs> dude i still can't figure out yeah. how do you make that fo- like what is that phone call like hey know. you know what are you thinking about our surplus yeah. how about we take your best fucking player <laughs> <laughs> We may give him back. We might not. Y'all aren't going to do anything with him. (laughs) Try it. Yeah. This is a good move. And I mean, uh, the obvious thing was that he was, it just wasn't going to work with him in Calgary. Obviously, they almost had him locked up in October. Uh, Everything stalled out. And Calgary needs to figure out a long-term plan there, too, because they're they're a good team. They're just not there. Uh, Yeah. I mean, we're gonna see some shakeup from them. I think. Yeah, it's nuts to see yeah. that Vegas is a wild card team, and they're mm-hmm. what top ten in the league. Yeah, I'm sorry, the thirteenth, but still, they're a wild card team. That's how good the fucking the Pacific Division is right now. Yeah, so I think this is a good move for them. Uh, to I, but you have to think about signing. Who gets signed? Who gets signed? Right. That's the real yeah. question again in the off season. <laughs> yeah, wait and see. Yeah. Um, next on the list is Elias Lindholm. He is a what did I just hit? Okay, we're good. He is a center for the Carolina Hurricanes. 
Um, I'm sorry. No, he's not. I read that wrong. That's the other Lindholm. Oh, no, that was that right, Lindholm. That's, Jude, your boy is not on it today. It is been yeah. a goddamn day. Elias Lindholm. He is a center for the Vancouver Canucks. Mm-hmm. That's right. There you go. Um, in, Previously with the Flames. With Yeah, with the Flames. He started with the Hurricanes. That's, yeah. Where the yeah. fuck have I been? Oh, it's sleep at the wheel, dude. Clearly, it's been it's been a rough day, y'all. <laughs> yeah, um, thirty nine points in sixty eight uh, sixty eight games. I mean, mm-hmm. I I would imagine if they can win the cup this year, that Vegas just resigns everyone that they can. <laughs> yeah, because at that point, why would you want to like? Why why would you want to? lose that especially when out when you went out and got him at the deadline right it's i think it's a better move to keep him we'll see though it it depends on what he puts up on the board um if the canucks are able to make it into a cup run you know what i mean if he is able to produce they'll keep him i think if he because he hasn't been doing that stellar this year yeah um so i think if he continues to not really put anything up then you'll see them walk away from him as well. That's fair. I, I think it was a good move again. This is another situation with the yeah. Flames that... Just try again. Just yeah. get rid of what you 100%. can, knowing that they're probably not going to stay. Get something right. for them. And just, you know, call it. Make peace, yeah. Yes. Um, Number three on the list is Brandon Montour. He's a defenseman for the Florida Panthers. 27 points on 50 in 52 games, but he's got a plus minus a minus three. And that's not terrific. Uh, he no. is carrying a three and a half million dollar cap hit this year. Mm-hmm. He'll be 30 by July 1st. So it's like. He again, I think another person who, if he can prove himself yeah. in the playoffs, he will secure his contract for another year. I mean, and he had a way better season last year. Like he had 73 yeah. points last year. Uh, yeah. I just, I don't know what the hell happened this year that he's just slumping. I mean, everyone has their good years and their bad years. Right. Clearly. Um, and I mean, I like Brandon Montour. He's a former duck. We drafted him. Uh, he's a, he's a reliable nice. defenseman, but again, it really. I are going to call him a delight there for a second. I was like, oh, that's sweet. Well, he is a delight. We, we loved Brandon Montour. The... <laughs> I mean, I, I just, I hope that. He can prove himself at like as useful as he did last year in the playoffs because he was a fucking machine right. last year in the playoffs. Yeah, I, I just I don't know what the deal is going to be in Florida if they don't win the cup because they're the best team in the league. Like um, or second best, I'm sorry. Boston, second best. Yeah. I think Bruins are on top yeah. again, which is why we'll talk about that later. Do we think that this is their redemption arc? I mean, you can't have the best season in the history of the league and then face plant. And then fuck it up, yeah. (laughs) Um, Number two on the list is Jake Gensel. He's a winger for the Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, He's carrying a $6 million cap hit this year, uh, and he'll be 29 on July 1st. I still don't understand why the Penguins... $6 million is reasonable for Gensel. Yeah, I still still don't get why the Penguins... Actually, I think that's a deal for Gensel. Yeah. Truthfully. I think he could get more. Uh, Yeah, I mean... And again, I I still don't get why he d- yeah. they traded him. Cuz I mean, he's got 60 points this season. He's on one yes. plus minus of plus yeah. 16. Like why the <laughs> fuck are you tra- Kyle Dubas, bro. <laughs> and again, again, he's undervalued because I think he could be closer to something like what we saw um uh, Patrick Line and who's the other person that got like an eight point something million dollar contract for multiple fucking years? Oh, I know. And like, like I, I wouldn't be surprised at all. He's already if Gensel had been offered that. Oh yeah, and he's already fucking. <clears throat> he's already having a better season statistically than he did last year. I mean, he missed a good chunk of the mm-hmm. season due to injury. Um, but right. I mean, he's a he's got a history of scoring seventy points a year. And being a clutch guy, like you yeah. took him off of one of the most consistently powerful top lines in the mm-hmm. league in Pittsburgh. Um, and they gave up almost fucking nothing. 
I, almost I know. Like they gave up some to players, get sure, but you lost out. You got a conditional first round <laughs> pick. The only condition is we'll take the pick and you can have him. That's the only condition yeah. I want. Like, oh, if we make the playoffs, right. nah, bitch, you hand me that first rounder now. Yeah. <laughs> right. And dude, uh, it's crazy. He's only twenty nine. Like he is. I think if if Carolina can swing it, they'll keep him. Especially if he's like comfortable staying at that six million. I think he's undervalued. Yeah. Um, and I don't know. I would have to dig so much deeper into Carolina's <clears throat> uh, cap space to figure that out. But I think that if he if he continues to be a producer for them, and if they get further this year in the playoffs than they did last year, obviously, I think we see Gensel resign there. Like he's supposed I, yeah. to be a rental, but I don't think he'll stay a rental <sighs> if they can make it fucking happen. I, dude, if they if they make it happen, because like there's always the chance that he can go back to back to Pittsburgh. Uh, he's played yeah. his entire career in Pittsburgh. I can't see that not being an option right? if Carolina decides not to keep him. Um, but again, but do you think he would stay if he was? My question becomes, who does he have a better chance at winning a cup with? Yeah, Pittsburgh. Or Carolina. Right now, and not currently Pittsburgh. my money's on Carolina. Yeah. yeah. So I would if I were him, and that's what I'm looking at, going back to Pittsburgh, where I mean he's had his career, he has family, like that's his yeah. home now basically. Yeah. Or staying in Carolina and again hoisting Sir Stanley. Like I know which one I'm choosing. <laughs> oh, same. Same. Uh, number one on the list, which is shocking to me that this player hasn't mm -hmm. even been fucking re-signed forever. Dude. Uh, Sam Reinhardt. He's a right winger for the Florida yeah. Panthers. Uh, 28 years old. He will be by the uh, first day of free agency on July 1st. 6.5 mm -hmm. million cap hit this season. He has 79 points. He is having a career yeah. year. Uh, he's two goals away from 50 goals this season. Plus minus of plus nineteen. Uh, this is yep. the former. This is a former second overall pick. I mean, he he's had seven seasons of getting twenty or more um, goals in a season. With, yeah, which is a stat we'll talk about again later. Um, he's at, yeah. like he he's a producer. He's so only, why the fuck? He's only not <laughs> yeah. floating. He's only scored less than twenty goals in his in a in like in his career one time in in his one career time. once. Yeah, um, that's crazy. Once he went to Florida, though, I mean his production went sky high. Um, yeah, the dude's a savage. Like I've been singing his praises for forever. Um, but right, dude, like. Why the fuck are you not locking him up for at least the next five years? Because he might be money. He's only 28. It might be money, though, because look at how much they're paying fucking Matthew Kachuk. They are paying Kachuk. And Alexander lot. Barkov. They're paying Barkov 10 million and Kachuk 9.5 million. Bobrovsky's contract is oh. also huge. Yeah. Um, what is it sounds like they both want him to stay but i just don't know if they're gonna be able to make it happen but i tell you what if he hits market he's gonna have his pick of teams oh my god for and sure. like if you think about their cap space right now is under a million dollars so like depending yeah. on where that goes because i mean barkov's cap hit for next season is 10 mil uh kachuk's mm -hmm. cap hit You've got uh nine point five Sam Bennett four point four five uh Carter Verhage four point one Evan Rodriguez three million um like it's fucking you're gonna have to sell off massive chunks of your team yeah in order to hit I mean what his seven million or Bobrovsky something is what he's getting? got a ten million dollar cap hit Aaron Eckblad has a seven point five million dollar cap hit. For next season yeah. so like that's really, who you're getting rid of yeah you gotta you gotta pick someone or some ones this is this plural. is this is where you see uh probably brandon montour be the one to go and they keep reinhardt because like yeah they're not going to re-sign Acaposo. tarasenko's a free agent next year uh mm -hmm. so like yeah nick cousins is a free agent so i imagine 
Like there's a lot of a lot of their big name guys are are coming up on a contract year. So this is how important do you need to make yourself be to a team? Yeah. Yeah. I think we're going to see some shakeups. I really do. Oh, and I yeah. think that that might be good, honestly. Yeah. It at least makes it fun and it gives us more to talk about on this year podcast. And I think so. I think with that we'll see a huge shift next season in teams in yeah. in where your power power teams are going to be where your teams that yeah. are going to be looking to restart a little bit so i think we're gonna that's... see a shake up with coaches as well i mean we've seen it so far this season oh yeah um but i think we're going to continue to see that especially there's a couple of contracts that are coming due so well we'll see but there's a bunch of other names um in 2024 as well including um patrick kane mm-hmm. um uh, Nikita Zadorov, Daniel Sprong, uh, Max Pacioretty is actually, his contract is ending too in Washington. Yep. Tony D'Angelo, uh, Dumba, Duclair, Pat Maroon, Anthony Mantha, who we already talked about. Um, Corey Perry, his contract is up again. Yep. Um, Mark andre Fleury, obviously. Laurent Brossois. Um, Stolars is also there. Jacob Vrana, again. Yep. Um, so there's a couple of other big names. Um, so we're going to see some other movement. We just haven't heard any rumors about those other names just yet. Yeah. And like, we're, we're at a point now where I don't think a lot of teams are super, super worried about their, you know, everything's yeah. kind of switching to the playoffs and, and focusing on that. So hundred percent. All right. So next we are actually going to move into just a little fun factoid. Um, Alex Ovechkin became the third player in history to record uh, 19, 20, goal seasons consecutive 20 goal seasons that's fucking nuts so that's insane um the other two players are brendan shanahan and gordy howe gordy howe has 22 20 goal seasons 19 of which were consecutive that's and then there was a break and then he had um a couple additional 20 goal seasons because gordy Um, played forever (laughs) gordy did play for fucking four decades dude ron francis um had 20 20 goal seasons as well yeah nine different players had 17 20 goal seasons including gretzky marcel dion matt sundin mike gartner brett hall uh Yoram ignala did i say that right yeah um joe sakic timu solane uh and mark messier well of course timu had but i this is where it gets even more uh impressive i almost said Progressive, and that's not even a fucking not word. A word. This is where it gets more impressive, is that um, Alex Ovechkin is the first player in NHL history to have 19 consecutive 20 goal seasons from the start of his career. That's nuts. no one else has been able to do it since entering the league. That's not. They either didn't get it their first year, or they had a break somewhere later. Yeah. Um, so he is the only player to do it from the start of his career. Which That's again crazy. is fucking insane. Yeah. Um, also, one thing to note while we're talking about Gretzky, um, when Gretzky was in his 38th year, like when he was age 38 <clears throat> and still playing, he only had nine goals. No shit. That year. Only nine. Um, and he was not, again, he stopped at 17, 20 goal seasons. So. For all the talk of people being like, Ovechkin can't fucking do it anymore. He needs to hang up his hat. I hey, still play um, well. Eat shit. <laughs> you know how many yeah. players in the NHL don't have fucking 20 goals right now? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> a lot, a lot. A like, lot so players. many. That's cool, it's though. so many players. And yeah, it was a really, really cool stat. Um, so I was um, surprised by it. And also... It, it's one of those stats where it's like, who comes up with this? Yeah, I know. Um, he's also the only player with that amount of it, like with an active streak. Yeah. Um, because he's also the only one. fucking old. Yeah, he's also the only one still playing. Old enough to have that. <laughs> yeah. The only one old enough to ha- still have that. So um, pretty cool news coming out of there. Um, and then unfortunately, we do have a bit of sad news that I'm going to get into just super quickly. Um, the... NHL said goodbye to Chris Simon, a former Washington Capitol, uh, also former Minnesota Wild player as well. Um, He unfortunately passed away on Monday at age 52. Um, The 
cause of death has not been announced and his family is asking for privacy during this time. He um, spent seven seasons in DC. He had 151 points during that time, over 320 games. Um, So he was actually um, drafted, I believe, by the Philly Flyers, Mm -hmm. though he never played a game for them. Um, He then went on to play with Chicago, New York, Calgary, um, the Islanders, Minnesota. So he played with um, a lot of people. And he also played with the Avalanche. He was there on the team when they won their 1996 Stanley Cup. He was with Washington when we made our first ever um, playoff appearance as well. Yeah. Um, Peter Bondra has put out a message saying that um, Cy was a great teammate and he's going to be very, very much missed. Um, And a couple of others have spoken out as well. Um, For those of you who weren't alive when he was playing, (laughs) um, he was definitely an enforcer. Goddamn right. um, For sure. (laughs) Like he beat the shit out of people. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah. 1,824 yeah. career penalty minutes in the NHL. Mm-hmm. Also, it is KHL. And 236. Yeah. He's got 553 in the KHL. Mm-hmm. That's nuts. 236 of those were from one season alone. That's insane. In the KHL. Yeah. It's insane. It's, it's... Um, he wasn't without controversy, though, so we will note that. Yeah, of course. Um, he was suspended eight times um, for on ice incidents. 30 of those 65 games came after he stomped on Yarko Rudo's leg with his skate in October of 2000 or in December of 2007. I remember that. Um, very fucked up. I remember yeah. that. That was. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Um, he also two hand slashed Ryan Holweg in the face mm-hmm. after um, an intentional boarding and was suspended for the rest of the 2008, 2007, 2008 season. Um, he um, has noted or had noted um, after he retired um, when he filed for bankruptcy, that he was unable to work due to injuries he sustained while in the NHL and likely because of the type of enforcer he was. Um, he had symptoms of chronic traumatic ensilof- ensilof- I can't say that word. Encephalopathy. I have yes. to like really slow it down. <laughs> um, encephalopathy. There we go. Whatever. Y'all know what I'm fucking saying. Yeah. Anyway, he also suffered from depression, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, Mm -hmm. um, and had arthritis in his shoulder, hand, knees, back, and neck. Um, So we talk a lot about, like, the cost of professional sports, and there's a high cost to a person's body. Um, And I think that's why when we talk about things like, um, should they ask for more money, the older they get, I say, yeah, because Mm -hmm. they're risking a long, happy, happy, healthy life by right. continuing to put their body through the stress that like playing this kind of a sport puts on you. Oh yeah. And um, I mean, I get, it. I played, yeah. I played this sport and you and I obviously have our own experiences as well through playing lacrosse. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, this sport is not forgiving mm-hmm. in any way I have. There are pockets of my life. I don't remember because of concussions due to this, the sport. And I have so yeah. many injuries due to the sport, but like, you do what you love, yeah. and and mm-hmm. he very much so loved the sport. And I mean, I I know as you and I being the same age, like I remember Chris Simon and that dude. Yeah, he just got under your skin, and even more so for you, you mm-hmm. know, being a Caps fan, he played for you guys. So yeah, for <clears> seven <throat> seasons. Um, much respects yeah. to to Chris Simon and and his our thoughts go out to his family. It's very sad. You never want to hear. 100%. anyone in the community passing especially at 52 that's know, that's really so young, young for that to happen um so yeah i'll just we'll leave we'll end this with um uh what avalanche president and former teammate joe sackage said he said chris was a great guy a beloved teammate and an important part of our final or our first championship season he was a really good hockey player who could score goals was a big presence in the dressing room and was the first person to stand up and defend his teammates off the ice, he was an unbelievable guy and a caring father, son, brother, and friend. He will be sorely missed. Um, so, yeah, we just want to make sure we gave a moment to talk about Chris um, to to sort of honor him for a second. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but let's get out of that <laughs> very sad topic <laughs> and go into something a little bit more exciting. Let's get an update as to where we are with the um the standings shall we 
We shall. All right. So, uh, division leaders here leading the Atlantic Division. The Boston Bruins have 97 points. Uh, second place there, Florida Panthers with 94 points. Uh, mm. Third place, the Toronto Maple Leafs, 85 points. Uh, the Metropolitan Division league or division leader, New York Rangers, 94 points. Uh, second place is the Carolina Hurricanes with 92 points. Philadelphia Flyers are third um, with 78 points. The Western Conference uh, Central Division has the Winnipeg Jets leading uh, 93 points. Colorado Avalanche, second place, tied actually for second with the Dallas Stars mm -hmm. with 91 points. Uh, and the Pacific uh, has uh, Vancouver Canucks leading with 92 points. Edmonton Oilers are in second with 84 points. And the Los Angeles Kings are in third with, oh, technically tied for third right now with the Vegas Golden Knights with 79 points. Uh, wild card spots right now in the East go to Tampa and Detroit. Mm. Um. Look out, though, because Caps one the Caps out. are one point out. Uh, the Islanders yeah. are two points out or three points out. And uh, the Buffalo Sabres are five points out. Yeah. They're not out just yet. They're not, they're not out of it. Um, obviously, right now on the West, the Western uh, Conference, wild card is occupied by both Vegas and the Nashville Predators. Mm -hmm. Um St. Louis and uh, St. Louis Blues, Minnesota Wild, and Calgary Flames are all in the hunt. Uh, they're all less than 10 points there. So, I mean, there's still a bit of a shot. Your league leader, like we mentioned, is the Boston Bruins. Um, obviously, again, last year, they, they set a record for the best record in the history of the NHL. Uh, yeah. Your bottom five, 28th. Yeah, who are those, Chris? 28th place. Uh, in the league is the Ottawa Senators, 29th, the Columbus Blue Jackets, 30th, the Anaheim Ducks, 31st, the Chicago Blackhawks, <laughs> and last in the league are the San Jose Sharks. Wow. Um, no one obviously has clinched the playoff spot yet. We've still got, yep. what, 14, 15 games left for most teams. Yeah. But I think we'll be seeing that very soon. Yeah, we'll see a few start to trickle in. Um, interesting um, where we're at so far. Yeah. Um, actually, this kind of does lead us into um, our question of the week. Which is sort of twofold. As we look ahead to some playoff predictions, <clears throat> who do we think has lived up to the hype this year? And who do we think has maybe been a letdown or fallen off of a cliff? Um... Well, I'm going to start with the obvious as the Florida Panthers. Um, they yeah. were not expected to be anywhere close to where they ended up their, finishing their season last year. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, they've capitalized that in a huge way. and They led the league oh, yeah. for a long time this season. Um, I, think, I think they're a team. They, they are pretty much the obvious. But the Detroit Red Wings... Um, they got better this year. <laughs> Granted, yeah. it has been a little rough the past couple weeks. Um, obviously, notably without yeah. Dylan Larkin uh, until yeah. he returns from his injury. But D Detroit has done what I've been hoping that they were going to do is they finally gave Larkin help. And he has been right. the, the, the guy. Obviously, you have a great young defenseman like Cedar over there. Patrick Kane has done a right. lot. Um, I think... I think they're a goaltender away from being a serious playoff contender that not having to worry about like mm -hmm. wild being a wild card spot, having a spot in this in uh in the metro, I think wouldn't be completely crazy. Um I would have liked to have seen them do more at trade deadline with yeah. where they are. Yeah. Um also surprising this year has been a little bit the, the Arizona Coyotes. Like there's been some life there. They were on. F they were leading the division at one point. I just want to point this out. At one point, think, they were leading the division. <laughs> I think they might still be leading in um, in away games. Like they had one of the best away records this season. They're at eleven, nineteen, and five. Yeah, no. 
Um, I am let for down. A game? Yeah, interesting. They're away games. It's a, they're eleven nineteen and five. I am actually okay. going to say they my letdown is the Seattle Kraken. Uh, Seattle really? took a massive step back this season. Yeah. Uh, they were dangerous last year. They got in. They came in hot into the playoffs. Yeah. Um, like they, they're right there. Was their opportunity to be like, hey, we're here too. Mm-hmm. Now they're uh, they've got sixty eight points. They're twelve points they're just on, above Arizona. Or yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. it's not it's it's not going well over there this season, and and I don't know what the deal is. I feel like they've had yeah. some injury bugs, which happens. You know, it gets the best of us, but that's a big lesson. Yeah. Also, New Jersey Devils. That's gonna be mine. The New Jersey Devils, massive fucking letdown. I mean, I think that they had all the elements last year and fucking blew it. And this year, they're not even giving themselves a chance. And, like, wh- why, where, when, and how did that become the thing? Yeah. Because they're, they're pretty well stacked. They are. Like, on paper. On paper, they're incredibly well stacked. But they're just not showing up to games whatsoever. I think for me also, um, a bit of a surprise is to see that the – um, Vegas Golden Knights are only in a wild card contention spot. I mean, they are the defending Stanley Cup champions. I know. Who had a hell of a run at the end of the season last year. <clears throat> so what happens and why are we so behind the eight ball? I mean, what, they've had 36 wins, they've 24 losses. also had a laundry list of injuries this year, and it's been big name players. Yeah. Like, looking at this right now, I'm seeing three star players that just aren't right. going to play. Um, yeah. That is a huge factor. Plus the emergence of, of teams like the Vancouver Canucks, uh, right. Who've just Suddenly being simply come out of nowhere. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I just, that's, I that's mean, insane. They, yeah, I am, uh, pleasantly surprised to see Boston Bruins leading the pack again. Um, after such a dismal ending to their season last year, yeah, I thought I was going to see them struggle a little bit more, to be honest with you, just yeah. because morale wise, like that had to be a real kick in the ass. Not only that, but you um, lost a huge part of that team in Patrice Bergeron yeah. who retired. Right. Like, yeah. So I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised to see them leading the pack. I hope they don't fuck it up. Um, though I am confident that they probably will. Um, which <laughs> sucks for them. It's the play. Once the playoffs hit, they just. I'm gonna keep it's saying totally it until they prove beast. me wrong. They cannot get yeah. their. They can't get their shit together. No, I'm a little. No, absolutely not. I'm a little bit like let down by the Buffalo Sabers as well. I, if you guys mm-hmm. remember, I predicted the beginning of the season that they were gonna finish in the top three of the Atlantic because look at how well they did last year. Like they, they <laughs> yeah. built on. They built or they were slowly building on. Tage Thompson being mm-hmm. having a fucking insane year. Alex Tuck coming over the deadline. Uh, right. Casey Middlestat was doing great. Now they traded Casey Middlestat. Granted, you the return was good. They got Bowen Byram, who's a great young defenseman. Right. Um, I think but... that, like they're not out of it. That's the thing. It's like there's still yeah. a legit shot for them to get to the wild card. But 100%. I I held them to a higher standard this season. Yeah. And I don't regret that. No. Um, I will say a team that I'm very impressed with is the Hurricanes. I think not only did they, they're continuing to execute on the level that they were last season. Mm -hmm. So they're staying relatively healthy um, and competitive. But I think that they had, um, with some exceptions, some of the best trades at the deadline that we saw. Oh, yeah. Um, Obviously, the Gensel get was. Uh, earth shattering (laughs) um yeah but i think carolina made smart smart choices for their team and their play style more importantly um i think even getting evgeny kuznetsov he's really started to show up and show out there and knowing him the way i do um from being a fan in the area um he is a postseason performer oh yeah you know what i mean he really lights it up and he'll get it done when they need him to I think that's what they shored up this year, though. You know what I mean? Last year, yeah. I don't think they had many finishers on the team. Um, and I think this year, 
th that might be a missing component. And so I am pleasantly surprised by that um, for sure. Oh yeah. Um, um, I'm surprised by the Dallas stars doing as well as they did. I feel like they're Dallas to me is sort of like a quiet assassin. Like, I don't think people talk about that team enough, probably because most people don't like Dallas. Yeah. But so they it's are like eh. a really good fucking but hockey team. A really team. good team. Yeah. Um, and so being third in central division, um, I think showcases that pretty, pretty well. And um, I'm very fucking curious to see what Edmonton's going to do. I can't tell if I'm excited for them or what, because I feel like we're in the same position we are with them every year, year in and year out. Yeah. Well, so like, ask me again in like eight weeks. <laughs> here's my question to the Edmonton Oilers. Are your, is your first line going to produce for you this time in the fucking postseason, Or are they just gonna, <laughs> not going to do anything? Because they all had over a right. hundred points last year. All three of them. Four, if you mm -hmm. count Evander Kane. Like, well, do we have to? I mean, believe it or not. You know, but like, you know, <laughs> oh, no, he didn't have 100 points last year, did he? He was just under. I don't know. But no, your top, you but have still, all of counts. those players doing that well and none of them did anything for you. And you can't blame goaltending. Y'all have Stuart Skinner now. Yeah. He's a fantastic I goaltender. They need to get a fucking consultant in there or something to. We need a training montage. We need a scene from Rocky. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, we need something because I don't think, I don't want to say it's because they don't have the heart because every one of those players talks about how you have the best player on the it. fucking planet on that team. You have no excuse. Yeah. You have no excuse. Right. You have Connor McDavid. So what is, what is the reason? And I don't, I just can't figure that out. I, I, it's consistency uh, it, or it's the fucking Gretzky yeah. curse. I, I don't want to say it's that. I think it's, there's such a level of stress that comes in with the playoffs. Oh, the playoffs. There really, such a really animal. is. They're such a different animal. They're, I mean, <clears throat> in terms of physicality, what we see in the regular season, if y'all think that that's intense, it's fucking playoffs. Otherworldly uh, in the playoffs. Old, like. Yeah, 100%. And I don't think that they have the mentality for it. I don't think, as shitty as it is to say, I don't think that they're a mentally tough team. Well, I don't think it helps that your top player, obviously, Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl. But other than that, Zach Hyman is next with 65 points. Yeah. Like, they're not having nearly the production from <clears throat> guys like Ryan Nugent Hopkins, uh, you know, that they had last year. And and I right. get it. It's it's hard to be consistent like that all the time. But fuck, dude. Evander Kane yeah, is only 38 something. points this season. Yeah, That's slumping for him. I mean, now you obviously you add Adam Henrique at the deadline. That's a huge pickup. Right. Um, that's a good get. Forty three points with Anaheim. <laughs> that's that's saying that's telling you you get that with man the fourth worst team in the league. Yeah, you give that man the fucking puck and he's gonna put it in the net. He knows how. Yeah. Um, but that's <clears throat> they gotta turn it around, man. They they need to figure it out because yeah. fuck, dude. They're this team is too good to have not won a Stanley Cup. It's they're embarrassing. Too good. And it also means that, unfortunately, that we're going to see uh, McDavid walk away at some point. I think he does. If he's there another year not winning the cup, I think he's going to be like, I am how old now? I'm done. Yeah. I need me a cup. Connor McDavid <laughs> cup. anywhere else. Where's my sippy? Would be going fucking insane if it, when it comes yeah. to winning championships. He would, be, he would probably have four enough. or five. That's how good he yeah. is. Um, yeah. It's it's yeah. So we'll see. Can we'll we see. both can we both agree that we're not shocked by the Chicago Blackhawks being in the basement? No. No. I've they, never been shocked. No. They, I've they, I've never been less shocked in my life. You have one good player. Legitimately. And singular. That's, that's no disrespect to like Taylor <laughs> Hall or or you know no. Nick Felino. No, guys that have, are good, but like you right. have one fucking productive guy. You have one producer. You had two, but you, had, for whatever fucking reason, he's him away. Yeah, yeah. And then the other guy that was supposed to help out has been on IR all season because Taylor Hall yeah. is tore his ACL. So like, right, <laughs> which like you can't, you can't predict that kind of shit. <clears throat> no, no. Still, I. This is the thing that, and I mean, 
this is one of those things that comes with being the bottom team getting the first round pick, right? You're putting your hopes They're and always dreams get the fucking the franchise in one cat and one in, kid. <clears throat> one legitimate fucking child. Yeah. Like these aren't ever 26 year old dudes who have been playing for seasons, right? Like these are our new players. And so you either have to wait for them to mature um, in the NHL or in the AHL, or you bring them into the NHL and hope that the shock factor doesn't fucking kill them. I just want to point out and, that the Chicago Blackhawks have $65 million in cap space. Sorry, can you repeat that? Because I don't think I heard that. My $65 million dollars in cap space. No, that's what I heard you say, mm -hmm. but there's no way that's fucking possible. Yeah, they're only paying out, their cap it is only $69.17 million. Then why were they not fucking active as shit at trade deadline? Why were they not grabbing up Dude, everybody? Seth Jones is their highest play paid player at $9.5 million. Their highest, dude, their highest offensive player is fucking Taylor Hall and Tyler Johnson. Anthony C. is not far off, but they're paying, what they're is... paying the highest amount of money on that team is $9.5 million. That's what are they doing in Chicago? Dude, they, they're paying, you've got a bunch of young kids, you got a bunch of kids that are all, that are on their rookie contracts, I mean, and then you've got you've got a bunch of RFAs this year, which again, a lot of these young guys are going to be on their RFAs because right. their their entry contracts are are going away. They have yeah. they can sign whoever they want for however much money that person wants. <laughs> this is a blank check situation. How much do you want to pay? Yeah, nope, sure. Uh, that's got to be strategic in some ways, but you have to wonder at what cost. It's a rebuild. It's their rebuild because. I, I understand, but at $69 million available and you're shit in the bed this bad, you're losing fans. They're going to be pissed off. Yeah. They're not going to be coming into your building as much because nobody wants to go to a home game and see their favorite team get absolutely shit on week in and week out. So you're giving up money now in your hands because they're in the stadium buying a fuck ton of beer to get so wasted that they forgot they lost. Yeah. And like, for what? Because a rebuild that's five years away from being fucking impressive? Yeah. Like, I don't understand. There's so much talent out there this very fucking minute. Why like, are we sitting on our hands? This is also a... This is also a franchise that has a very long history of being good. Like, especially yeah. in, the last tw in the last 20 years. Like, they've won multiple right. Stanley Cups. You know, you're coming off the, the back of releasing the two two of your, you know, franchise's most important players. Right. Um, so where do you go from here? Are you hoping that Connor Bedard is going to fix everything? Because as good as this kid is, he's not going to fix everything. Well, and also because of how much you suck ass of the people that can come to you. How many are willing to? Not probably not like many. If, they have all the money in the world, right? Let's say Connor McDavid becomes available next year. Let's say he says, "Fuck it, I'm out. I'm tired of losing all the goddamn time. Take me anywhere in the world." Chicago offers him a contract. He'll say, "Anywhere in the world, but Chicago." Because the only because suck ass. the only exciting. If I'm Connor McDavid, the only thing that is exciting to me about Chicago is that young kid Connor. named Connor Bedard. It's the only yeah. thing that's exciting to me about that team. Um, but that wouldn't be enough for me yeah, that to sign it. away years of my life for Knowing a rebuild. That they're going to play in the fucking bottom of the league again. Like, you're just, you're going to yeah. see, they're not going to get anywhere. And that's, I get it, but like, dude, you got to do something. You got to do something. Yeah. Because 100%. this is crazy. If we don't see them starting to snap people up from, um, from free agency, I, I, I mean, I think that do you just go off in the fucking off season? Yeah, I mean, you have to, right? I they would can't, hope. I don't think it could be. I don't think it should be legal to have that much cap space and suck that much. You know what I mean? Like, for all of Gary Bettman's talks about why the lottery works, because you don't want teams tanking it during the regular season for hopes of signing a number one. Now you have fucking Chicago over here with nearly $70 million in cap space. I mean, Anaheim has $55 million in cap space right now. 
still, that's not, I, I mean, that's still way too much. Yeah. But it's not fucking 70 and you have the number one goddamn pick. Yeah. And our highest like, where's the paid rebuild? player is Troy Terry. And we have him for a while. He just inked a big deal. Yeah. He's making 70 a year. So like even right. with Anaheim has a massive number. But again, we've, we're seeing them at least trying to do shit. Right. To where I haven't really seen anything that makes me excited about what's going on in, in Chicago. Chicago. No. Absolutely not. Wow, that just made me unreasonably upset. <laughs> no, it's crazy <laughs> to think that's like, what the Anytime fuck? Anytime we talk about them, I get unreasonably upset. Yeah. Also, I should, um, too bad Danger's that. not here because the Wild are beating up on the Ducks three to nothing. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, we discussed them last week. I did not get the shoes. I just, I yeah. couldn't, I just couldn't make it happen. I was yeah. not willing to not pay bills and not eat for a week just to have sneakers. You know what? Reasonable. And I'm glad you made that decision. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a sneaker a head, but decision. I'm also an adult. <laughs> yeah. Food is a and little I'm more And I'm sure important. someone will sell them. I'm sure uh, I can find them. You know, them in the market later. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I bet if I go. It's not like... Yeah. If I go to the They might fucking... not be the same price, but Yeah, I might pay a little more, but you know. Yeah. Um when you have the funds available, then it's worth it. I wonder let me see if they're on any fucking they're not on any um any like post or like not what what is the word I'm looking for? The resale sites, there we go. Resale sites. So yeah. far, yeah, I didn't see any. Well, Granted, they haven't shipped yet either, so yeah. they can't really be on it because they'd be because remember they weren't going to ship these new ones out until the summer. Yeah. So in the summer, I would check again for sure. I mean, worst because I bet you they're there. If they're still available now, I will buy them tomorrow. But yeah, we will see. I will keep you guys updated next week. <laughs> um. Wow, that's crazy. All right. Well, so I think we. We wrapped up that question of the week, which leads me to, if you have a question of the week, please drop it below in the comments. Um, tweet it at us. Fucking carrier pigeon. Whatever you got to do to ask your question of the week, do it. We will, we will happily answer it. Yes. Um, and also let us know who you think lived up to the hype and who you think um, needs to be slapped across the face for fucking having $70 million of cap space and doing absolutely nothing with it. <laughs> Oh, wait, that's only one organization. That's a really one quick team. answer. Sorry, I'll make it more team. difficult next time. Um, all right. Well, then let's go talk about the three stars of the week this week. How does that sound? That sounds real good. You don't get a choice, so I'm glad you agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, unfortunately, Danger's not here for this one, which really sucks, because our third star this week is none other than Marc-Andre Fleury, goalie for the Minnesota Wild. Uh, he was 2-0-1 with a .97 goals against average and a .961 save percentage in three games, helping the Wild uh, close within five points of a playoff berth in the Western Conference. He turned aside 22 of 23 shots in a 4-1 win over the Arizona Coyotes before recording the 75th shutout of his career, recording 16 saves in that game um, against, unfortunately, the Anaheim Ducks, who they're also <laughs> fucking demolishing right now as well. Yeah, it's not going well over here. <laughs> it's not going well. It's not going well. Um, Flurry moved within one shutout of climbing into the top 10 in NHL history. So that's something that we very well could see this season. So be on the lookout for that. He closed the week making 35 saves and a 3 2 shut, uh, shootout loss to the St. Louis Blues. Playing in his 20th NHL season, the league's active wins leader improved his career record to 560 wins, 326 losses, and 95 overtime losses and 1,019 appearances, ranking second in all-time in wins, third of all-time in saves, fourth in goaltender games, and in minutes played. Um, they, the Wild are 5-1-2 and two in March, tied for the most points with 12 among all NHL teams since the start of the month. Just such impressive stats from Flurry. Yeah, he continues really to are. cement his status as future Hall of Famer. Like, Oh, fucking first ballot. Nuts. Easily. 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 If it's not Easily. unanimous, I'll be They don't shocked. even have to if, right? Flurry. There's boom, no way it's not. Done. They're yeah, polishing done. that shit Easy. in Toronto right now. <laughs> it's already been printed. Yeah. There's there's waiting to engrave the date. Yeah, pretty much. Um yeah. 
Our second star is someone we've already talked about, Connor Bedard, <laughs> uh, center for Chicago. He earned a share of the league points. Uh, that sounded weird. He earned a share of the league points lead last week, um, two goals and five assists in three games played, helping the Blackhawks post a pair of wins. The first overall pick in the 2023 NHL draft. I just had a stroke. <laughs> It's not going I was for so any convinced of us as I'm no, I was so convinced I was reading 2023 that that's not how you say that. No. Um that I was saying it wrong, but I was right. Anyway. <laughs> um he had a 5 point performance with one goal and four assists and a 7-2 win over again Anaheim just getting shit on. Yeah. Uh his goal was the 20th of the season joining Eddie Olsik. Olchek. Ols- yeah, Olch- that one. Olchek. <laughs> Yeah, the the um the CZ wise always mess me up. Yeah, because C and Z doesn't make that sound. What they head. don't specify anyway, is um, a game against the Ducks. We lost eight to two. Yikes! Mm-hmm. That hurts. Mm-hmm. A lot. That hurts my heart for you. Um, <laughs> his goal was the twentieth of the season as just the second eighteen-year-old to score twenty in a campaign. For Chicago, his five-point game matched Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Ilya Kovalchuk, uh, Dale Howarchuk, and Jack Hamilton as just the fifth by an 18-year-old in NHL history. Nugent Hopkins and Kovalchuk are the only other 18-year-olds with a four-assist game. Bedard was held off the score sheet in a 5 nothing loss to the Los Angeles Kings. Mm. And ended the week by notching his 12th multi-point game in a 5-2 win over the San Jose Sharks. The NHL's rookie score uh scoring leader increased his season points to 21 goals and 32 assists and 54 games played with his points per game rate of 0.98 ranking sixth among all rookies in the past 20 seasons which that's gonna gotta be an interesting list of who's in first in the last 20 seasons you know uh you know my favorite Ilya kovalchuk stat he's the all-time goals leader for the franchise for the winnipeg jets you know we never played a game for the winnipeg jets (laughs) You have told me that before, and I forget it every it's time. The so it's the best great. stat. My goldfish memory helps <laughs> me uh, to be entertained. The jet. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. Um, in case you're curious, um, Alex Ovechkin is the number one in that record. Um, that's crazy. <laughs> he played 81 games his uh, his freshman year, so to speak. 52 goals and 54 assists for a total of 106 points. He had a plus minus of plus two. So his points per game was 1.31. Um, I will note that Sidney Crosby was not far behind. He had in 81 games, 39 goals, 63 assists for 102 points. So just a four point difference between the two. Um, he was negative one for the year. And the stat that surprises me the most is that Sidney Crosby had 110 penalty minutes. Yeah. And his, his opening season to Alex Ovechkin's only 52. Do you know the record. record for most um, goals in a season by a rookie? Uh, I do not. Timu Solani. Really? 76 goals with the Winnipeg Jets. Fuck. The original Jesus Winnipeg Christ. Jets. Jesus Christ. 80, in 84 games, he had 76 Insane. goals in a season. <laughs> He's only not on this list because this list is only for the last 20 years. Yeah. So, unfortunately, His rookie Timu, season was in 1992. Um, yeah. <laughs> It was a little too long ago, Chris. I'm so sorry. Oh, it makes, it, it makes me it feel hurts. old. It hurts. <laughs> it hurts. Um, so, yeah, shout out to Connor for being second star. Being a stud. Incredible job. <sighs> yeah, I, I hope your organization gets it together for you. Fucking really for fucking real. Do. Give me, someone give me the controller. All <laughs> NHL franchise mode this bitch. <laughs> that is so fucking accurate, though. God. It's like when we were kids and you let the, like, the, I don't know, the four-year-old have the controller and just yeah. mash buttons. You know what I mean? That's Dude. what Chicago's doing to a team right now. I'm go- I'll tell you what. I'm going to, I'm going to buy. Or I'm going to, I'm going to do NHL 24. So Chicago Blackhawks? Go for I, yeah. It. I'm going to go, um, I'm going to go into make a franchise mode on NHL 24. I'm going to use the Blackhawks and I'm going to see how fucking, what a year like with their shit uh-huh. team is, and then we're gonna try it again. <laughs> Sell everyone. Do over. Call a do over. 
that's 100 percent what we're going to do with them yeah. in nhl 24 yes yes um also real quick just wanted to close the loop on that the third person is Evgeny malkin yeah. he had um six sorry 33 goals in his um rookie year and Connor mcdavid only had 16 goals in his rookie year um so he had quite a climb to become the fucking best player in the world um and then matthew barzal is just ahead of Connor bedard right now by one point with or by one goal with 22 goals wow kind of crazy yeah all right first star we have um one of my favorite players to watch honestly um even though it frustrates the fuck out of me when i have to play him um nikita kucherov a right winger for the tampa bay lightning kucherov tied for the league points lead with two goals and five assists in just two games helping the lightning defeat a pair of the top ranked teams in the eastern conference to strengthen their hold on their first wild card berth kucherov began the week by recording his sixth career five-point game and a 6-3 win over the new york rangers woohoo in the process he reached the 70 assist mark for the third time in his career Mm -hmm. uh joining Connor mcdavid with six as the only active player with three plus 70 assist seasons the Mm -hmm. 10-year lightning star followed up with a one goal one assist effort and a 5-3 win over the intrastate rival the florida panthers reaching the 40 goal plateau for the third time in his career only Lightning captain Steven Stamkos, who we don't know we'll, if he'll be with the team again because <laughs> they're fucking stupid, has more 40-goal seasons in franchise history. Kucherov increased his season points total to 40 uh, goals, 74 assists in 66 games, closing within two points of scoring leader Nathan McKinnon in his bid for a second career Art Ross trophy. Kucherov swept the Art Ross Hart Trophy and Ted Lindsay Award honors in 2018-2019. Those are our three stars. Dude, this McKinnon week. is, or I'm sorry, not McKinnon. Um, Kucherov is. McKinnon's a beast. McKinnon's, yeah, As McKinnon's well. a beast. But like, Kucherov, I feel like has really been the only exciting part of the fucking Lightning this season. <laughs> yeah. I will say this picture they have of him on NHL.com. His eyes are so piercingly blue in this photo. Yeah. It's very creepy because it's very, it's very much an attack on yeah. your senses mm. looking at it. Yeah. Try being someone so with blue agree, eyes and look looking in the mirror when you wear blue. It's like Jesus <laughs> Christ. Yeah. Like ah, no, it's God. it's it's a lot. <laughs> I bet it's kind of creepy in the middle of the night. Mm. You know. Yeah. You just look over oh, at I someone with a little bit of light. You just <laughs> blue eyes. Yeah. Just glowing. Asked, ask ask any of my exes. <laughs> <laughs> I ha- I know one of them at least. So you do. Yes, you call. do at least know one of them. Um, yeah. <laughs> that would be so random if I called him up and was just like, "Hey, bud, um, hey. can you tell me about um, a situation where?" Can you tell me um, what it's like anyway. to look into Chris's eyes deep <laughs> in, in the middle of the night? They, the are they night. just blinding? Do they scare you? Yeah, yeah you I guys can't you see. Would... I do have blue eyes. They're very blue, but because I yeah. don't like light, this is about the lightest my room gets. Yeah, fair. <laughs> um. Let's get into some bad boys before we get into the hurdy boys. Yes, let's do the bad boys. Um, let's see. Last week, we would have talked about um, Matt Rempe. Um, yes, we did forever. discuss Matt Rempe. We did discuss him. Yes. So the only new fine is Dmitry Kulikov of the Florida Panthers for an illegal check to the head of Connor Sherry. Um, love Shears, former Washington Cap. Yep. He was... Um, I'm sorry. I'm talking about suspensions. Um Dmitry Kulikov was suspended for two games for an illegal check to the head of Connor Sherry. Um, he forfeits $10,416.67 for those two suspensions, which brings our total count this season to 107 games that people have been suspended for already um, and $1,402,517.42. Um, so we we do not have any new fines. So there were some people were better uh, behaved. Dmitry Kulikov was not, and is going to have to sit out for two games, wow. which he's already served most of, and is probably back on the ice. So, yo, I, or I'm about to buy soon. NHL 24 for 20 bucks. <laughs> I can eat. Nice, that's a seal. Xbox was like, yeah, sure. EA Sports. It's in the it's game. The game. Classic EA intro. Dude, yeah, let me know how that works out. By the way. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I've been playing NHL 23 because it's what I had, but I was like, fuck it. But now, 
now we get to see what happens um, when someone who has uh, common sense runs Chicago. Oh my god, I was like, why is there so much money in my account? I just got paid. <laughs> just nice. panicked. I was like, holy shit. That. I love that feeling. Oh my god, it's great. Yeah. All right, Chris, you want to take us into our injury report? I think I can do that. So, uh, do it. obviously, as we do every week, uh, we start in alphabetical order. For the Anaheim Ducks, we have Brock McGinn with an upper body injury. He's expected to be back at some point next week, um, as well as Trevor Zegers, who is nursing a broken ankle, and Radko Gudis with an upper body injury. Um, all expected to be back by at least the end of the week or next week. Um, for the Arizona Coyotes, Barrett Hayton uh, is day to day with a lower body, as well as Nick Bukestad, who is uh, who has an undisclosed injury day to day. Only new one for the Boston Bruins is Pat Maroon. Uh, it's a back injury. It looks like he should be back on the 26th. Um, nothing. Which I think he was traded injured anyway. So. Yeah, yeah, he was one of the players that ended up on the injured list before they could yeah. play with their new team. Uh, nothing mm-hmm. new for the Buffalo Sabers. Uh, a couple new ones for the Calgary Flames. Jacob Markstrom uh, is day to day with a lower body injury. Uh, Connor Zari with an upper body injury should be back by the twenty third. Not bad. Um, yeah. Uh, Carolina Hurricanes, Tivo Taravainen, uh, upper body injury expected to be back by Friday, as well as Jack Drury, who has a lower body injury, also expected to be back Friday the 21st. Uh, Chicago Blackhawks, Connor Murphy has a groin injury. He is likely Ooh. out until uh, he's likely out the rest of the regular season. Um, Reese Johnson has a concussion. He should be back next week. Mm-hmm. Um, that sh- that is it there. Still no news on Gabriel Landeskog, but there is expecting he should be good to go by next season, which is excellent news because it's now been almost yeah. two full years since we've seen Gabriel play. Uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Columbus Blue Jackets. Adam Boquist has an upper body injury. Jesus. Like God, I know you see it all. I, they've these got so many. Yeah, I just looked over and saw that, and I was like, "Holy fuck!" Uh, he should be back gonna by Saturday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Patrick Line is out still due to personal reasons. It looks like mm-hmm. he should be back by the end of the month. Uh, yeah. For those that didn't catch that, Patrick Line is one of the players that has been in the player assistance program this year. Um, Igor Chanikov is out with an upper body injury, should be back by Saturday, as well as Justin Danforth with a concussion. Um, Sean uh, Corrali should be back by, uh, March 28th. He has a lower body injury. Uh, down to the Dallas Stars, Yanni Hockenpah out with a lower body. He's day to day, as well as Tyler Sagan is also day to day. Um, and if Gandy Dodonoff with a lower body injury expected to be back on um, Thursday. Nice. Uh, Detroit Red Wings, both Dylan Larkin and Jake Wallman are day to day with lower body injuries. Um, looks like Vile Huso should be back by Friday, which that's, you know, going to help when you have a good, your solid goaltending. Only one. 100%. The only one for Florida is Aaron Eckblad, and we talked about him last week. He should be back mm-hmm. by the 26th. Only one for Los Angeles right now. It's Victor Arvidsson. He has a lower body injury expected to be back at some point this week. Wow, he's been in and out of the uh, injury report a lot this year. He has. Um, yeah. Also, we should, by the end of the week, early next week, we should see Carl Grundstrom back with a lower body injury. He's been out since it last updated March 1st. Uh, two for the Minnesota Wild. Joel Aris- Erickson Eck has a lower body injury, should be back by next week. Uh, and Jared Spurgeon uh, is officially done for the year. You know, I don't think anyone was really surprised. Yeah, no. Nothing new for Montreal. 
uh, except for the only update is Chris Weidman should be back with uh, with the Montreal Canadiens by the 30th. Oh. Uh, Nashville Predators' Jeremy Lozon has a lower body injury, uh, expected to be back by the 26th. Uh, let's see. The New Jersey Devils' Nolan Foote is an undisclosed injury. It looks like he will be out until April 2nd. Uh, John Marino is uh, day-to-day with an upper body injury. Uh, Nathan Bastian has a lower body injury. He is expected to be back by the 26th. Um, And it looks like by next week, we should be seeing uh, Jonas Siegenthaler back as well. Love Siegs. Oh, yeah. He's great. I actually have him on my um, my NHL 23 team (laughs) because he's a beast. Yeah, he is. Uh, nothing new for the uh, New York Islanders. The Rangers, however, have Ryan Lindgren on IR with a lower body injury. He is expected back uh, on April 9th. Uh, Jacob Truba is expected to be back uh, on the 23rd with his lower body injury. Uh, the Ottawa Senators, Matthew Highmore is on IR, uh, lower or upper body injury. He's expected to be back by the end of the week. Uh, Zach McEwen, also with a lower body injury, expected to be out until the 27th. Um, and Roar, uh, Rourke Cartier is out until March 21st at the, or at least with an upper body injury. Uh, the Philadelphia Flyers, Nick Sealer, lower body injury, expected to be out until the 26th. Rasmus Ristolainen is out until mm. March 30th with a lower body injury. Um, also, Sean Couturier, coach's decision. Uh, he is a healthy scratch, it looks like. till wow. the end of the week. What did he do I, to piss off? To piss off Torts? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That's really the question. Is what did you do to piss off Tortorella? Yeah, 100%. Um, Jamie Trysdale is out uh, until the 26th with an upper body injury. I miss you, Drysdale. <laughs> uh, Your love couple, affair with Jamie Drysdale. I do. I'm so sad we we didn't keep him. That I makes know. me so sad. Um, Pittsburgh sure. Penguins, Matt Nieto is out with a knee injury. He should be back on the 26th. Uh, Jeff Carter out with an upper body issue should be back by the end of the week. Um, the uh, Chicago, Jesus Christ. Uh, the two different places. I mean, they're both real shit. So the San San Jose Sharks, um, Mackenzie Blackwood is out with a groin injury expected to be back by the end of the week, as well as Mike Hoffman. He's out with an upper body injury. Ty Emerson is out with a lower body issue. He is, should be back by next week. Uh, a couple new ones for the Seattle Kraken. Uh, Jaden Schwartz is out uh, day-to-day with an upper body injury, as well as Vince Dunn, who's also day-to-day. Josh Jacobs for the uh, for the St. Louis Blues has an update. Should be back by the end of the month. Uh, he has been out since February with an undisclosed issue. Yeah. So it'll be excited to... Uh, we'll all be excited to see Josh come back. He's a great defenseman. Yeah. Uh, Tampa Bay Lightning, Hayden Flurry is out with an undisclosed issue, as well as Logan Brown. Uh, both are expected to be back by the end of the month. Hayden Flurry looks like should be back by the end of the week. Good. A uh, c- couple big ones for t- the Toronto Maple Leafs. First to start, yeah, Ryan Reeves is out day to day with an undisclosed issue. That looks like it happened at some point today. I'm not, or okay. as of time of recording, we record on Tuesdays, yeah. so. Um, nothing we will obviously update that next week uh mitch marner is out with an ankle injury expected to be back by the weekend um and Ilya labushkin is expected back in the lineup later on this week with uh with an illness um uh, oh who else oh Callie Yarncrock is out uh with an upper body injury he's expected back beginning of april uh, Vancouver Canucks, Dakota Joshua, an upper body issue out till at least March 25th. Uh, Thatcher Demko, who we discussed briefly last week, looks like he's updated to be back by the end of March. Yeah. 
Uh, the Vegas Golden Knights. Alex Petrangelo is out due to an illness. Looks like he should be back at the end of the week. Um, Pavel Dorofeyev is out with an undisclosed issue. Should be out also by the end of the week. Um, and Tomas Hurdle with his knee injury is expected to be back by the 25th. So he still has yet to play a game with his new team. New team, yeah. Uh, you guys have nothing new with the Washington Capitals. Finally. And the only new one left for the Winnipeg Jets is Gabriel Velarde with an upper body issue. Looks like he should be back by the 26th. Wow, okay. Nice. Yeah, that Excellent is... Excellent job. That is... Hey, thanks. You're I welcome. didn't fuck up any names. I just fucked up the city. <laughs> But again, it's not much of a fuck up when they're the exact same fucking team. <laughs> when they both suck so much. They both ass. suck yeah. so bad. <laughs> they're terrible. They're absolutely god awful. Yeah. Um all right, well then I think that leaves us with one final segment I th- for our show today. I think that that does and that is specifically the obscure NHL player of the week. <laughs> I love that we both did it. <laughs> I know. I had it key I had it queued up and everything. I was ready. Yeah. <laughs> um, um Chris, who is it this week? So this is a player by the name of Brendan Ranford, uh, born in Lahr, Germany, uh, in nineteen ninety two. He was Okay. So he's a, our age. He is, yeah. He's he is our age, fellow millennial. Um, he was drafted 209th overall in the 2010 NHL draft by the Philadelphia Flyers. Um, nice. he has only played one game in the NHL. More than me. And it wasn't even with the Philadelphia Flyers. Um, who was it with? The nephew of the former NHL goaltender, Bill Ranford, played his only career game in the NHL in 2014-2015 with the Dallas Stars to which I was going to guess that unbelievably the the Dallas Stars I honestly was going to guess Dallas that's crazy I don't know why yeah he didn't didn't do anything of no no goals no assists no penalty minutes um he did have a lengthy career in the AHL um as well as some stuff overseas where he is still currently playing um shout out to brendan yeah he started his career off like most players do either in college or in the chl which is the which is a minor league um he spent where am i he spent his entire (laughs) minor career in the chl with the cam loops blazers uh 358 career games 137 goals 220 assists total of 357 points 298 penalty minutes. Wow. Yeah. Eight playoff games. He had two goals, two, uh, six assists, and six penalty minutes. Oh, that's not bad. Uh, he spent um, a good chunk of time in the AHL as well, most notably with the Dallas Stars organization, Texas Star- Stars, as well as the San Antonio Rampage and the Tucson Roadrunners. Uh, 338 career appearances in the AHL. 63 goals, 133 assists, total of 196 points, 127 penalty minutes. Uh seven goal or seven games in the postseason there, five points a goal and four assists with four penalty minutes. Okay. Um he spent a couple different spots. He spent um a year over in Sweden, uh, where he played for Mora. Ick, Mora Ik, I I apologize to our Swedish listeners. Um, in that league, he had twenty nine yeah. games, eleven goals, twelve assists for twenty three points, fourteen goals. Or I'm sorry, fourteen penalty minutes. Dude, we're we're getting there. Reading um, is fundamental. Reading is so difficult. <laughs> um, he played one season, actually the same league that he continues to play in now. Uh, the, it's the Slovakian Pro League. Okay. Uh, he played 29 games in that that year. Uh, 12 goals, 20 assists, 32 points, 8 penalty minutes. That's it. Four playoff games, oh, he's done his four best points. Behavior. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, then he played in the DEL for a little while, which for those that don't know is the German Pro League. A lot of famous players like Christian Erhardt have come over from there. Um, Amelia's little brother, right? Yeah. I'm sorry. Did I, Erhard, Erhard. It took you a second to Erhard. like Erhard. get the okay. That name's dude. It's it. The... <laughs> you guys, <laughs> I apologize for how horrible it is <laughs> today. We're we're having a bad day. Christian, we're Erhard. having a great day, Chris. Yeah. Um, but he had 146 games in the DEL. 38 goals, 85 assists for a total of 123 points, 86 penalty minutes. Okay. 10 playoff po- or 10 playoff games, 5 5 points, 6 penalty minutes. Um yeah, he continues to play um with that same team in the Slovakian league to this day. And um I don't know, you know, 31, maybe it might be uh Maybe the option is not to return to the NHL in any fashion. Just keep keep killing it in the league, uh, in the, hey. the German league or the Slovakian league. If it's working league. for you, yeah, keep it going. Fuck yeah. We love well, to see it. Shout out to Brendan Ranford. For real. And again, I apologize for you guys having to struggle through listening to me read today. We're not, it's, it's going and... real fucking poorly over here. <laughs> hey, we've definitely had episodes that have gone worse. Oh my God. Yeah, um, I know. <laughs> some days there's three of us that can't read. Dude, it's um, some days, yeah. It's just <laughs> Yeah. Some days it's bad. Some days it's rough. But we do yeah. it together. We do. We survive together. Yes. That's what we do here. We do. Um well thank you guys for surviving with us. Um as always, we um hope that you'll join us again next week. Um, because we love you and we, we want to give you all the best NHL news, um, in the most aggressive way when I'm on at least. Yeah. Um, if you guys yeah. are still watching, um, in the comments, I want to hear watching. your favorite obscure player from your favorite team. There you go. Like, do you have one a player that wasn't necessarily good, but you just loved him anyway? I'd have to think on that because most of the players that I love are n- notable in some ways. You know yeah, I mean? that's that's very that's true. That's a thing. I'll, I'll think on it. I'll get back to you next week. Yeah, Chris. Yeah, that answer. Definitely do that. And you get back to us immediately right in now the in the comments. Comment. You don't have any time because you can pause this and I won't know the difference. Exactly. When you the- comment, and I don't know if you watched the video three days ago or three minutes ago. I mean, unless you want us to wait for you, like we'll we'll take a couple minutes and you know we'll wait for you to comment. Yeah, I got time. Yeah. Go ahead. Check and make sure you're checking proofread, proofread before yeah, you send it spelling. to because like you don't want to fuck up like I do. You did. don't want uh an Amelia Earhart's little brother or or kind of situation. You know, puss suitor. <laughs> Peace love puss suitor. Peace love puss suitor. By the way, I did I was listening um to a game the other day and I swear to God, the announcer called him puss. <laughs> It's I so swear good. to you, that is what the announcer said. And I was like, so we're right. Yes. So we're right, uh-huh. is what I'm hearing. You guys all set Anyway, commented? Fuck yeah. <laughs> See, we waited for you. <laughs> Who else waits? Exactly. We catered we to our audience. Space. We didn't have to. So um, it was a two-hour recording. You know, you're welcome. Remember, it is free to like and subscribe. So do that on whichever platform you are listening, watching, uh, you know, <clears throat> stealing the broadcast from whatever just like and subscribe it helps it's nice and most importantly it's free yeah and who doesn't love free shit exactly i know i do I, same exactly Big same <laughs> dude if i could get more free shit in life I don't want to... no well dude i got free fucking guinness glasses today yeah i know i asked for one for my sales rep he handed me a box of six <laughs> Good for you, dude. Win-win. I'm so jealous. I don't know what yeah. I'm going to do with six. Dude, if you lived closer, D, I would hook you up with a couple. I 100% would just come over and steal one. So I'd be like, yo, do you do you want any? <laughs> I hit my buddy up down the street. He's taking a couple. It's like, I don't need all these. I need like two tops. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Too funny. All right, y'all. Well, we love you. And we will see you next week in the face-off circle, motherfuckers. <laughs>